Okay, so this picture here, I took it uh, during a morning run I had just a couple of weeks ago. Um, can we have a little bit more silence? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I live just a couple of hundred meters from the sea. So this is essentially my home. And the interesting thing is I believe that many of us, we feel at home at the sea. Perhaps we don't feel at home, but we might feel at peace, or we might feel happy. We enjoy the sea. But the sea has also always been, it's always played a very economical role in our lives from the beginning of mankind, essentially. So uh, we have used it for trade. We have used it to fish, fish, sea, uh, seafood, and so on. But it is also the cradle of life. And still 70% of the oxygen that we breathe in the air comes from the algae in the oceans. The thing is with the sea is that there's trouble in paradise. This picture shows a group of local fishermen in a small coastal town in Sierra Leone in West Africa. And they're pondering over the day's catch, which as you can see in the nets is almost nothing. So the fish that they've caught today will not be enough to feed them or their families. And this is something that is going on in coastal regions all over the world. And of course, it is hitting the developing world extra hard because these are communities that really, really rely on their coastal fisheries. But we see fisheries collapse, as I mentioned, all over the world. And the situation is actually quite alarming. So there are scenarios by the United Nations Fisheries and Agricultural Organizations that say that fishery as we know them might collapse by 2048 if we do not do something about this. The World Wildlife Fund just issued a new report, I think it was three weeks ago, stating that half of the life in the oceans is gone since 1970. I mean, think of it, just the last 40 years, we have depleted half of all life in the oceans. And the reasons for it is this. Large-scale troll fishing. So what is troll fishing? Well, troll fishing is essentially that you go out with these huge vessels, with these huge nets, nets that cover entire square kilometers and you essentially vacuum clean the ocean for fish. So this picture shows one of these trawlers scooping up 400 tons of jack mackerel. Think of it, 400 tons of fish in a single net. Uh, some of these new nets that are coming out, the so-called super trawlers, they're so huge that you can fit 13 jumbo jets in one single net. Absolutely insane. And this means, of course, if you go out with big industrial fisheries like that and huge nets and you essentially vacuum clean the ocean for all fish, there is absolutely nothing left for the small coastal fisheries such as in Sierra Leone. So it's an interesting case with jack mackerel. Um, it is mainly used for feed, not for food for humans, which is the irony of it. So uh, there used to be around 30 millions of tons of jack mackerel in the ocean and in just 20 years, this has diminished until 3 million ton. So one, just one tenth of it is left. And the irony of it all, as I mentioned, most of it is used for feed. So 80% of this fish goes for fish meal, which is used to feed other fish or pigs. Fish, I mean in fish farms, it takes 5 kilograms of this fish to get 1 kilogram of salmon. But the rest of it, 20%, is used to make fish oil. And fish oil is used to make omega-3s. Omega-3s, as you can buy them as dietary supplements in those innocuous little bottles all over the shelves in the grocery stores or in the health stores, they're made from this fish oil. And it takes 600 sardines to fill one single of these bottles. 600 sardines. It's absolutely insane.
So let's go back a bit to the ocean and why are we using fish to make omega-3s? That was the question that I asked myself. Because the interesting thing is that omega-3s do not really come from fish. So omega-3s are essential fatty acids which we need to get with our diet. They're very important for our heart health, for our brain, for our eyesight and so on. And this has to do with that the marine food chain is sort of at the bottom of the food chain of all animal life, including us humans. So they are absolute essential nutrients, so it is a good thing that there is an omega-3 industry in the sense that these are very, very healthy things. But it is not a good thing that this is a multi-billion dollar industry which is growing at a whopping 12% per year and is driving overfishing in the oceans. So the interesting thing, as I mentioned, was that omega-3s do not come from fish. They do, in fact, come from the algae that live in the ocean. The algae that create the oxygen that we breathe, because by photosynthesis, they harvest the carbon dioxide from the air, and with the aid of the solar energy, with the power from the sun, they convert this into various substances, such as omega-3s. So I said to myself, isn't it a lot smarter if you make omega-3s from algae instead and from fish? And that was exactly what we set out to do. So today, um, growing algae is a fairly new field, but still an established field in, I would say, the new kind of biotechnology as we see today. So I'm definitely not the first one to grow algae. I'm not even the first one to grow algae to produce omega-3s. In fact, it's already been done using other types of algae, which are more like little fungi, and you grow them like yeast on sugar and so on, and you, you can produce them. So omega-3 from algae is in fact already used in 90% of, uh, of, all, all of all the infant formula that we see in the world today. Because you wouldn't want to use fish oil anyway. Because apart from driving over fishing, fish oil is also quite a nasty ingredient because it's full of environmental toxins such as PCB, dioxins and heavy metals and so on. So I said to myself, okay, it's better to do it the way that nature does it, growing it on sun and carbon dioxide because we get this beautiful cycle here of being carbon dioxide negative essentially, but also we get something which is so pure that it is a lot better also to use in dietary supplement and not just an infant formula. So the picture here shows uh, our first batch of omega-3 made from our algae, which we grew and farmed and harvested in our own algae farm in southern Sweden. Um, we started the company in 2011, and since 2013, we have been producing algal oil for omega-3s and product grade. And this, as I mentioned, was our first uh, batch of algal oil with omega-3s. Interesting thing as you can see here, these are black capsules and this has to do with that apart from omega-3s, the algal oil is also full of other important nutrients such as carotenoids as you would find a lot in, in carrots actually. So I usually say that by taking these capsules you do not only get your daily dose of fish, you also get your daily dose of carrots. So it's everything in the pill, it's perfect. Um, this little film just shows you what it looks like when we grow algae. So some people think it's some kind of open ponds, but it's actually not. So we use these systems of glass tubes installed in greenhouses where these algae grow in a water solution essentially, thriving on the sunlight and the carbon dioxide that we pump into the solution. And it just takes a little bit of plant nutrients and they produce all the substances by themselves. So this is a really, really sustainable practice here. And uh, you see this young fellow here watching over the algae. This is Gustav, who was actually my first employee uh, from back in 2011. And when he is not growing algae, he is uh, in the gym getting stronger together with the rest of the team. So uh, this shows uh, Gustav showing on his plyometric strength here on the bench. And we have Jacob in the green shirt, which is our head of the algae farms. We have uh, Hannes hanging there, who is our head of operations, and you also have the CEO and founder there working with the barbell. Um, the reason I'm showing this picture is not to show how awesome we are in the gym or how cool we look or everything, but it's to bridge over to the next part of this, and this is about lifestyle. Because what we do is about lifestyle. 
it is very easy to fall into the trap of being this geeky tech company and talking about algae as something very futuristic and, 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 and green and special and everything. But we think it's important to realize that we need to reach out to the world, we need to reach out to consumers, and we are people ourselves, so let's talk to people in the way that people talk to each other and not in the way that scientists, scientists would talk to, admire, be admired by a crowd or anything. So, uh, the picture here shows the actual process of creating our logo, the logo for Simris. As you can see, it was hand drawn on a board of wood, a little bit like you would find just a piece of wood, you know, that has uh, yeah, landed along the seashore uh, with uh, the name on it. And uh, the important thing here is about that we wanted to make something which is very human and relatable. And also, if you think about it, that since algae are those primordial plants in the sea, we could also say that they are actually the hipsters of the sea because they were the first to do photosynthesis. So we also like to give it a little bit of a hipstery touch because for us, it's a lot about lifestyle and pop culture. And uh, the interesting thing was that when this logo was discussed out there on the design blogs uh, on the internet, people wrote about that this was a really, really bad logo because it didn't look like the logo of a tech company growing algae, a high-tech company. This rather looked like something you would find in a little shabby shack in a harbor somewhere. And that was when we understood that we did the right thing because that was exactly the impression we wanted to give. Um, however, I would never say that we are about shabby, we're absolutely not, because we're rather about, um, like someone quoted or, or rather described the work of Annie Warhol as being um, creating uh, or turning everyday things into objects of desire. So our objects of desire actually look like this then. So, this is our final product, our Omega-3, and here you see how the logo beautifully works on this glass bottle. And if you look at the bottle and if you think of what the normal Omega-3s look like on the bathroom shelves, I mean, they're white, they're plastic and everything, we try to create something which you really, really feel happy about having in your shelf. It becomes more of a decoration object than anything else. And, uh, Apart from the omega-3s, we also realize that we have to open a wider discussion about algae, again, to make them relatable to everyone. And uh, uh, here you have it. We started a collaboration with other algae growers uh, in Europe mainly, where we sourced other algae ingredients to make a variety of products uh, just to show how colorful the world of algae really is and how many things you can do with them. So, for example, this pattern here, it... it um, it describes the properties of a product called Sunride Spirulina that we have, where we played both with the sun, but also with the coil structure of the spirulina algae. We also have a product called, for example, Boost in Astaxanthin, where a red zigzag pattern uh, would relate to the molecular structure of this antioxidant astaxanthin, which is good for endurance and so on. And the way those products look like are like this, finally. Um, so it's a different series and uh, this is the point where you can look under your seats and you will find <laughs> hopefully some goodies there, um, both from our select series but also some omega-3s. So most of you will have gotten the crispies but there are also some, uh, some lucky people here that have the omega-3s or perhaps our sun candy algae tea or the boost in Essex Anting, as I was talking about. So hopefully you will enjoy some of our algae later on. So this is the final slide and uh, this is the point where I'm supposed to say something to end this presentation. However, for me this is not the end, for me this is just the beginning. I want to thank Wired for for appointing me as an innovation fellow and to invite me to this conference because we're just about to start our journey and bringing out our algae to the world and our omega-3 to the world. So this is also a premiere for our algae in the UK and hopefully we can release our products in 2016 properly in retailers and so on here in London. Thank you. <laughs>